Now we're just at probably one of the most important jobs of the year. Uh, you'll see behind me a uh, strange looking pipe running on the field there. Uh, this one here. Let me see now. Uh, yep, there we go. And it runs all the way up to them buildings up there. So them buildings up there are a piggery. It's this is my field we're standing in. And that hedge there is the boundary or the mairn as we call it here. That's the farmer that owns the piggery. So he is exporting some pig slurry onto my farm. And this pipe, we call it the poo pipe, is pumping slurry from the piggery up to all of my fields. Uh, I give it a light coating of pig slurry this time of year. So I take a bit in in February when the slurry season opens. And this field has already been spread. You'll see, uh, you'll see the lines on the field here. So it's been spread with the dribble bar. And uh, it doesn't look particularly uh, heavy, but it's only a light coat. And I only put on about 2,000 gallons or less to the acre. And pig slurry, it's different to cattle slurry. It doesn't look as dark when it's on the field. Uh, and because it's been on with the dribble bar, it doesn't actually coat the grass too much. So if we get a wee bit of rain, that'll uh, disappear down, it'll wash off the grass into the, into the ground. So in the last number of years, this application of pig slurry in February is the only fertilizer I have been applying to my ground. Uh, now I have got the lime right, so we checked the pH with some soil sampling and it definitely needed lime. This field uh, we're standing in, uh, the soil sample results came back and uh, it actually needed seven and a half ton of lime to the acre, which is massive. It's massive. Um, now, over the last number of years, it has received a lot. So in the last four years, I think I've put on five ton. It'll get another coating, maybe the autumn of this year, we'll see. Um, it's due to get another bit, um, but this pig slurry, is the secret, my secret to growing grass. Uh, it is great stuff to get the fertility up, get that little bit of nitrogen, a P and K as well. It uh, is super stuff. So we'll go and have a look at the machine in operation. So there's the pump, pumping from the tank through this umbilical pipe system. So here's the pipe system here. So it runs all the way from the tractor across the lane and all the way up through the farmer's field that owns the, the piggery and then it runs through the, the hedge row down there and that's it running up my field. So I believe these slurry systems can pump up to two kilometers away. Uh, not sure how far away is here, but it's a long journey all the way up to my last field. It's uh, My piece of ground is a long, narrow piece of ground. So we'll go up and see the slurry uh, being spread with the dribble bar. I'll give you a look at that. Now, so here's my slurry contractor on the go here. He has the dribble bar here. You can see it there. Uh, it's a decent size of a dribble bar. So this is pig slurry he's applying. It's pretty watery stuff, but it'll grow the grass. And that pipe is coming all the way from down at the piggery. Uh, it's, it's a good system because they're not pulling big heavy tanks around the ground because uh, the our ground will be pretty wet. Now it's dry at the minute, see he's not really marking. He has his wide wheels on there. So he's not really marking the ground. So I do put on about 2,000 gallons to the acre is my limit. That's all I'll put on of pig slurry at one time. Any more I find leaves my ground too wet. Actually the problem with pig slurry is you put on too much and if the ground is already waterlogged, it's the poor little worms in the ground that suffer and you'll see they come up and die on the surface. And if you see seagulls landing on the fields after pig slurry, 
it's a total disaster hate to see that because you're damaging the ground by killing the worm so we just put out a little bit of it and uh, doesn't seem to do much harm uh, once you don't overdo it but again it's important to keep the lime right because all these applications of slurry over years uh, builds up the acid level so try and put on plenty of lime and it counteracts that my ground actually runs up against a, a well a swamp basically there's uh, that's an old uh, lake or loch as we call it here that uh, it fills up in the winter you get a couple of foot of water in it and then all the way from here all the way along there is a bog there's about 150 acres off a bog in uh, out there I'll give you a look at that now so here's this valmet coming back now piece of ground here is actual bog it's black uh, it's peat it's pure peat uh, it's pretty difficult to get it to grow grass because it's it's hard to get it drained properly but the field the actual field up behind it there is it's a good field it's quite a good field to grow fa grass it's south facing uh, good spring growth on it uh, yeah, it's a good field it's a very good field to grow grass so I'll just swing around here so you'll see here this um, is a bog, it's quite a big area of bog, um, so this runs right up to me and you'll see here this is some new fencing that I've done along here. I had a problem with sheep and lambs actually breaking out into the bog during the summer when the drains got low and uh, it's a wilderness, it's a total wilderness out there so I, uh, I fenced it last year. I put up a new fence all the way around the, the bottom end of this field up with the, against the bog. It's the only way I could keep my sheep from breaking out into the bog and at least you know they're safe here in the field. So you'll see the tractor working just coming down behind me there. That's the field we're working in. So I'm going to give you a look in a bog uh, when I am beside it. If you've never seen a bog for some of our uh, international viewers, this is what a bog looks like. So it's an alien type of terrain with uh, pure peat underneath. Poet, and I didn't know it. So it's pure peat. You can see it's quite spongy. So it soaks up loads of water. It's like a giant sponge almost. So it soaks up water. It's very low lying. It's hard to drain it. So it's. Uh, yeah, there's 150 acres of this, just runs all the way back up here. It's a pure wilderness. Um, I remember when I was a young child cutting turf on this piece of bog. And uh, yeah, it was uh, fun in the summers. Good fun. Not much fun when the midges would get you though. But I do remember um, coming with a load of turf in the trailer. And we'll see the gate behind me here. I'll swing you around here, give you a look. So this gate, there was an old wooden cache, as they call it, with some sleepers and telegraph poles. And uh, I remember coming with the tractor and trailer coming out with the load of turf. And as the weight of the trailer crossed the cache, cache went down, trailer overturned into the drain, all the turf had to be taken out of the trailer. The tractor and trailer pulled out and the turf reloaded. It was some hardship, some hardship. So this slurry job that I import uh, because sheep are not 
really an intensive type of farming uh, and I don't spread any artificial fertilizer I'm able to import this from other farms and it means uh, it gives my grass a bit of a head start in the spring yeah so look it's it's a major advantage for me to have this slurry applied in the spring and it saves me having to buy artificial fertilizers because as we all know the prices of lamb at the minute and the costs have increased that much it's difficult enough to make money at cheap farming at the best of times but this is a great help it's a great kickstart for me in the spring gets the grass growing sheep and lambs but yeah basically when i lamb when we sheep lamb uh, sheep and our two lambs are fired out straight on the grass no meal so I need to have good grass to get them going so uh, this is a great help to the job to have that bit of grass for them now so that's it for today folks just a quick one to show you how I get this spring grass growing so I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like and a subscribe thanks for watching see you next time